much. Let me uh, take them in the order in which they were asked. I think that um, the first question had to do with NAPCO, um, the Nation Builders Core in the areas that um, have been owed um, to, to NAPCO. Um, I think that the, the program had about 100,000 people on it. And I, I think initially it was supposed to be uh, a three-year program um, and then would be renewed and so on. But I think that so far, out of the 100,000 that were taken, 34,000 have exited into permanent jobs under NAPCO. And the others are, are, are still, but I think that the issue that uh, Bella raises is the arrears and, and how we are going to deal with it. I've raised this issue, this, because this is not really, uh, it, this is some information that has come to me already about the areas in the NAPCO program, and I've raised this issue um, with the Minister for Finance um, and, and trying to, to persuade them to, to, to make uh, these areas payments. So we will co follow that up on behalf of the, the NAPCO uh, employees. The second issue had to do with the providing better health care in the manifesto and the issue of cars and how these um, will affect local companies. I think that what is very clear when you look at the manifesto is that we, we did not really say it was only for imported. The incentives would only be for imported vehicles uh, because you just said you will provide incentives. Clearly, under President Kufuor, there were incentives to, for healthcare workers and also for teachers to bring in vehicles, uh, and they will waive the import duty, and that basically uh, worked, but was abused. Um, we think that with digitalization and the unique identity of people, we can better monitor. Um, this situation. But the issue um, is that we need to be able to see how these, uh, quant these teachers and these nurses could also acquire with the necessary incentives from the local manufacturing companies. I mean, as you know, the numbers of teachers and nurses are very, very large relative to the production capacity of some of the firms here. But we are leaving that open to discuss with them and with the manufacturing companies here to see how we can incentivize. Our preference clearly is to buy local. Um, and so we will work with them to see how best, uh, if they can meet um, the um, terms in terms of production on time and all of that. I think we will try to incentivize them. But we will leave it open um, for discussion, and that's what we've done. Um, the other issue um, was that we wanted to do these tax reforms, import duty, flat tax, tax amnesty, and so on. But why don't I do it? now and and why do i want to i must have a manifesto otherwise if i do everything now <laughs> if i could <laughs> what would i do when i come into office <laughs> i mean how can you do everything now uh, uh, even president mahama former president who is who was president i'm only vice president but he was president why didn't he do everything then I mean, why is he coming back? He had full authority. I don't have full authority. The budget that has gone to parliament, which has been passed, is not my budget. Is it my budget? It's not my budget. The budget goes in the name of the president. It doesn't go in the name of the vice president. But when you have to think about what new do you want to do, you come up with new ideas. And I've come up with new ideas which I want to do when we come into office. 
everyone who is running for office, whether you are Kamala Harris or you are Baumia, you still have to think about what you have to do when you get into office. And this is why I'm presenting my new ideas uh, as to what to do. Um, Samson uh, talked about the scholarship uh, students and, and, and all of that. And I think this is a very, very important issue. Um, there's nothing more heart-wrenching than taking a student abroad and not being able to take care of them um, in, 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 in those circumstances. And I think that um, I believe, and that this is what we are saying, that one needs to, first of all, harmonize these databases so that you have full visibility and transparency. Um, and, and also, uh, we, we have undertaken in the manifesto to publish all the beneficiaries of, of all of these uh, scholarships as they come so that everybody knows who is getting the scholarships and so on. Um, and again, uh, I've, been, I've been made very aware of this issue. It's not, um, it's not new um, because students have even, and parents have gotten in touch with me uh, about the awards and, and, and the scholarships and so on. So we're talking with the uh, Ministry of Finance and the Scholarship Secretariat. Uh, I think they were able to to make some payments to, to some of the UK students and so on. But we will follow up on that because it's very urgent. Um, um, Cocoa Board is on the verge of collapse. Um, I'm, not, I'm not aware of that, uh, but uh, we'll, we will, we'll, we'll look at that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I cannot comment on that. Um, it's, it's not, um, I, I'm, I don't know where the data is coming from. Um, then the National Cathedral. Uh, the National Cathedral, um, again, is a very, very important issue for, because, I mean, taxpayers' money has gone into it, and many people would like to see it uh, completed. And I believe that one should have um, an engagement with the churches and all the stakeholders for us to see how best to, to, to get the funding to complete the project, but I think that um, we need to sit down and talk if it has to, if the design has to be looked at again to make sure it can be completed. We, we have to leave, put everything on the table, but I will be minded more by um, the, the churches and the church leaders and the discussions that we, we should have with them on the way forward, um, but I think it's, it's an important issue. Thank you. The sports fraternity to so the PFM. Hello. PFM sports. The Excellency, there was a question about the pharmacy staff and the areas. If you can clear that one, then. Yes. Um, the pharmacists are my very good friends. Um, we, we, but you're talking about 322 pharmaceutical doctors who are threatening to sue the Ministry of Health for their allowances. Um, again, I, I want to take this one up. I'm, uh, this is the first time I'm hearing about this particular issue. Uh, I think it is Sheldon who raised it. Um, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not aware of it, but I think it's an important issue um, that we, we should really um, resolve. Um, so we'll, we'll talk to the Ministry uh, of Health and, and Finance. Uh, thank you very much. We'll take Kankambodu's question from the sports, I, I believe. Please go ahead. Hello. Hello. Good evening, Mr. Pre Vice President. Uh, 
Before I go to my question, I'd like to draw your attention to the sad issue of the national amputee team. They apparently won the African amputee championship. They are owed per diems and bonuses and have not been paid. And they feel very neglected. And we all know that the strength of every nation is determined by how well they treat the vulnerable in society. In your manifesto, you talk about building six new stadiums in the six new regions. Currently, we have five major national stadiums, and only one, that's the Kumasi Sports Stadium, is fit enough to host a FIFA or CAF organized senior national team game. So I want to know what motivated that decision. And since we are even struggling to maintain five, how well can we do if we have 11? Thank you. Thank you, Kankam Boedu. We'll do... So, get a microphone to Ahini. Please. It's right there. Please get a microphone to her. From the Ashanti region. Thank you. Good evening, Your Excellency. My name is Ohinini Adazwa. Sumpa TV, Sumpa Radio, Kumasi. Yeah, Rastafa. Selassie, I and I. <laughs> In your manifesto, page 24C, you did mention something about flat rate. So let's say somebody import car engines and somebody second hand clothing. Are they going to pay the same amount? I think we need better and further particulars. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ahini. So um Thank you, Your Excellency. My name is Dachi Hene Nanayawa Sante from Onuya FM. Your Excellency, respectfully, uh, there is a saying that we should cry our own cry. You made a promise to teachers that you give them the opportunity of having cars. We know our minimum wage and where it stands. And the tripartite of T, V8 to 18.44 cities. The standard of living in Ghana is going high. Your Excellency, what will you do for 90% of people who are seated here today to carry your message on? They are journalists. Thank you. So what's your question? For what would you do for the journalist? Is that a question? Okay. Otek. Mr. Bwesi Yako from Otek. Ashanti. Please let's hear Mr. Bwesi Yako from Ashanti. Yes. Your Excellency, uh, I want to congratulate my MP, uh, Honorable Dr. Opoke Prempe. Um, Honorable, you... State, Your Excellency, sorry, you highlighted 14 key promises in your manifesto, but none of them were opposing timelines on it. So how can you hold you accountable if not? Because it seems it be to become mere political rhetorics. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Ibrahim. Ibrahim from GH1. Thank you very much, GH1. Your Excellency. Uh, my name is Ibrahim Al Hassan, GH1 TV Star FM. Uh, Your Excellency, um, of course, uh, forgive me for taking you back in 2016 when we were on the campaign trail. Uh, you had this declaration, and it's a very famous one. Uh, parents are suffering, students are suffering, traders are suffering, pensioners are suffering, drivers are suffering, contractors are suffering. Civil servants are suffering, farmers are suffering, fishermen are suffering, men are suffering, women are suffering, children are suffering, and Ghanaians as a whole are suffering. May I know the status of suffering of these individuals today? Okay. 
I'll take Vanessa from Metro TV Accra, and I'll come to Andy Kakam. So please get the microphone to Andy, and then Vanessa would speak. And then I'll be I'll come to you later. But Vanessa, Andy, then. Thank you. My name is Vanessa Idutumbuateng from Metro TV. Mr. Vice President, um, you will remember this quote. If the fundamentals are weak, the exchange rates will expose you. And as at the time you were um, making this statement, a dollar to um, CD was three cities and above, or about three cities, four cities. Right, thank you. 2024, a dollar to a city is 15 Ghana cities, about 15 Ghana cities. Okay, over 15 Ghana cities, thank you. How do I explain this to my mother, a cocoa seller, that in 2014, the fundamentals were weak, in 2024, where a dollar is now 15 cities, the fundamentals are not weak. But the prices of goods and services are high today. Thank you. Okay. Rapoko, please. No, no. Yes, let Abna come and then you come. I want to hear more of the ladies at Mebacho <laughs> Me pese me huna huna shisha ya kudun koko sports stadium so me pese me huna baby ati biano ewo asat na medase. Thank you. We we'll take Nana ya then His Excellency would give the responses. Please go ahead. Good evening, His Excellency. I would like my question to be answered in Chi, but I'll ask it in English. Ah, <laughs> say. Please go okay, ahead. Okay, so I'll ask it in Chi. I just want to know, sir, in the first 100 days, if Ghanaians decide to vote for you, what would be the things you would want to tackle first? Thank you. Let's take the responses and then we'll come back to, to the questions. Your Excellency. 